Hi, Michael Smith with Teach Construction. We're here with another episode of Teach Talks, and in this time, we're talking with a really fantastic program out of L.A. So as you know, this is a series of, of just really conversations with trainers or training programs or teachers from all walks of life and from different parts of the country. Last couple have been from Pennsylvania. These guys now on the other side of the country out of L.A., so their program is called ADAP, and I'm going to let the gentlemen introduce themselves uh, in the video I recorded last week. But ADAP ended up partnering with Homemade America, one of our other partners, and they made a partnership to, to really launch a workforce training program for construction in the LA area. So Homemade LA uh, worked with ADAP and launched a really cool program, and they utilize a lot of our tools. But here, let me just shut up and let's take a look at the video. Gentlemen, thanks for, for joining me again and for a brief conversation really about, about your program, how you ran it. And really one of the things that's most exciting to me is you you guys are a training organization and, and Joel, you'll tell us more about that, but you decided to do construction training with with a partner with Homemade Works and jumped in and, and your your data is staggering. You've had have great completion rates, you have great employment rates, which is in part thanks to the partnership with Homemade Works. We don't want to discount their their uh, program model. But really from this conversation, I want to just talk to you guys some more about how you did it and what challenges you had and how you overcame those. But uh, what may work best, Joel, if you want to give us sure. a little overview of kind of who you guys are and your program. Right, right on, Michael. <laughs> well, we wouldn't have such good stats if it weren't for Teach Construction. So thank you, sir. Well, I appreciate for, it. For this program and for the training. So ADAP, the Asian American Drug Abuse Program, is a stellar nonprofit community-based organization here in Los Angeles, almost 50 years. And ADAP was uh, founded um, on issues uh, about substance abuse. And the really the mission and purpose of ADAP is to change lives and save families uh, adversely impacted by substance abuse and life's challenges. Right. So when you think about that, that's the whole person approach. You talk about education, you talk about treatment, you talk about advocacy, you talk about prevention. And um, Vincent and I were so happy to be here uh, on behalf of our employment access unit, the employment programs, because you need to move these uh, individuals and families forward. So the employment access unit is led by Daisy Nakanishi and Lewis Lewis. We have to give shout outs to our leaders because they built this wonderful unit that helps people get jobs and careers and find work. And so uh, we work with the uh, West Adams WorkSource Center, and uh, it is one of the city of Los Angeles' funded WorkSource Centers, Michael. We have three focus areas. We have healthcare, security, and construction. Those are our target industries where we try to get um, our clients, and our, our services are free, right? They were part of the WIOA Act and the WorkSource Center System for Los Angeles. So we decided after meeting Homemade Los Angeles and getting a hold of your Teach Construction uh, program, we decided to make the commitment to bring a works program in-house, okay? But going back to what we did this year is, and what we've done for many years is the people that we serve are people with barriers to employment, veterans, women, uh, previously incarcerated, uh, older adults, uh, people with barriers to employment. We try to remove those barriers so that they can get a job, uh, enhance their jobs, and get a career. So uh, I'm really excited to, to to let you know that we had 19 graduated in two and a half months. It was our pilot project. We had um, we had around two week program. We'll talk about. We had 19 graduate. 18 or 95 percent were hired and are still employed uh, as entry-level construction workers in a variety of positions. And so we're just really thrilled about the partnership with you and partnership with Homemade LA. But the secret is really in how we um, how we implemented it with the WorkSource Center that has all kinds of different targeted industries and how we brought works, Michael. So it might be great to, um, if, if we can uh, introduce Vincent and he could talk a little bit about uh, the works program. Yeah, but I, first of all, I got to just acknowledge those are amazing stats. I mean, so you guys you did great. It's and it's so cool to watch that you you and the Homemade Works program still tracking uh, student engagement and student or graduate rather uh, employment numbers. So mm -hmm. kudos. We just had one graduate come in today uh, to check in with us because we do one month check-ins 
for all the 18 and we're going to follow them throughout the year so that we can understand what are the barriers of employment retention because this is not just a placement program it's a retention and employment enhancement as well so, I yeah. when I was running direct training programs, that was some of my favorite days when graduates, whether it be a month ago, a year ago, or and sometimes they had them from several years prior, would come in and just say, "Hey, this is what I'm doing," you know, and and you just get a chance to chat with them and and hear some stories, and you know, you just go home that day and say, "This is why we do all the hard work." Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, but very I, much. And uh, we actually just had another one of those days two weeks ago. We had about a whole crew of our graduates. Um, from different from different groups who just happen to be working together that day, just pop in on us on their lunch break. They decided to eat lunch right next door. There were, I think, five guys, and he just came over here and just wanted to talk to us for about five minutes. And the best thing for me is how tired they looked. They were <laughs> they were working, they were getting it, they were dirty, their uniforms were all dirty. Even the one guy who, uh, when he was here, it was. I want to say he was kind of like a pretty boy. Didn't want anything to get dirty. He came in just a mess. And to but, me, that so it's, it's the guy in the tie and the vest calling him a pretty boy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. But, uh, they came in here and they were just, they were getting it. They were working hands on and they just wanted to show us that, you know, this is, this is what I'm doing right now. And it's thanks, That's great. thanks to you guys. So that just, as you were saying, that was, pretty much the highlight of my year right there because right. they didn't have to come in you know they weren't even in our neighborhood they just wanted to show up and they were asking us is this opportunity still available when's the next class they wanted to refer people over here so other people in the community could get the value of what they've what they've had from our organization really all of our organizations because it is a partnership we can't do anything by ourselves no that's outstanding to hear when Homemade Works introduced me to you guys and and they were talking about doing a one week program model, basic skills one week, I thought, well, this is this is great. But wow, one week, that, that's going to be challenging. So they asked us to kind of set up a structure for a yes. week. But and Joe and I on my team, we sat back and said, well, what, what can be done in a week? And we both looked at ourselves and said, it's going to take a heavy lift to get this done and, and the perfect partner for that to happen, which you guys turned out to be. And I'm so pleased to hear it. But talk about that week, if you can, a little bit, Vincent. That's, that's got to be tough on you. Uh, it, it is. It's, it's tough. Uh, but it's, it's really what we do. So it's not outside of our norm. So kind of to expand a little bit on what Joel was saying, our organization, um, the WorkSource Center, our mother company of ADAP, when, when our department was created, we were created with the idea of when we're serving, our, the people that we're gonna be serving come from all walks of life. So just for like a snapshot, if somebody was in the throes of, of current substance abuse and they came to ADAP for help, they might not ever have had a job. So our goal is to get them ready for employment. And that doesn't really necessarily have anything to do with just getting them to quit using substances it's the whole lifestyle change so our model for that first week is how can we um, impact their their lifestyle their decision making as a whole so what we do in week one is again partnerships we can't do everything ourselves here we bring individuals from uh, different construction companies different unions uh, we bring um, individuals who know how to who have progressed in the construction field we have architects coming in. We have uh, stonemasons. We got uh, a little bit of everybody coming in to show these people that they've started in the exact same position they are now. We break things up. So uh, Monday might be a light day. Tuesday is going to be extremely heavy. Wednesday, we go and actually do field trips to um, some of the residential facilities that they're actually going to be working on so they can see a day in the life. They can picture themselves there they're meeting the people that they're going to be working with who are already welcoming welcoming them on as if they've already passed the interview process and how many then, hours a day are you guys with this with students in that first week where you're really focusing the on first that week they come in i expect them to be here at about 8 30 in the morning we open our doors at nine we have everything set up by nine o'clock so we tell them it's just like you're coming in punching in that card uh and then they get out at 4 p.m week two they come in at the same time but we might stay here till 5 5 30 depending on how quick they can get things done i don't want to jump ahead too much but when you're talking about week two where you're doing the hard skills of construction 
do you had did you find times where where the guys were not wanting to leave and they you know oh can we, let me just do this let me just do one more yeah. thing or are they yeah. trying to get out the door no they they didn't want to leave i had to kick some guys out at lunchtime I'm like <laughs> you need to go eat you need to get out of this room you need to clear your mind so you can come in and you can be better it's like thank right. you for wanting to stay here this entire time and get things done but what's going to happen is your quality of work is going to slowly diminish and you're not going to know. I used to love it when we were, when we were doing direct training, you'd have the guys over lunchtime say, well, let me just do a little bit more. I had to, and I wasn't doing the direct training. That was Joe, but I'd have to go out in the shop and say, okay, guys, you got to take lunch because Joe needs to eat. And yeah. he's always too nice. And he, he was always excited. If you want to learn, I'm here to teach you, but he'd forget to, to eat. So by two o'clock, he'd be dragging. So yeah, exactly. So I have these little chocolate covered espresso beans that I'd be chewing on just in case that happens before I get my brain <laughs> power up. But, and um, if I, Vincent, if I can, and Mike, uh, Michael, if I can throw some color commentary, Vincent's one of our stellar uh, vocational counselors, right? So he works with, with clients. So he added, he took on this uh, additional responsibility and scope of work of uh, becoming trained as a trainer in Teach Construction, Construction 101 Fundamentals and then married his his vocational counselor skills and mindset to be able to to put this all together so really vincent uh, the, the program works worked because we had uh stat, we had vincent and samaji stinson another uh teaching assistant that is a vocational counselor as right. well that was able to deal with our clients in a very special way not just as trainers and not just as voca vocational right. counselors but like a hybrid model, right? So what I think too is the week one that we do, and I'll go over some of the topics, it's fundamental in the success of this because in that first week, these students get to, you know, they have a lot of exposure to us. They can find out that we're bringing people in just for their benefit. So it's that relationship that we establish week one that allows our week two with you guys teach construction to actually come to fruition. So in, in week one, what I harp on every single day is communication skills, all different aspects of communication, uh, from the verbal to the body language to, to everything else, how they interact with um, themselves, you know, their coworkers, to how they interact with uh, different staff in the building, to just their personality, to, to, to everything. And I in that first week, we're pretty much just trying to teach them to be the best version of themselves. Now, you guys started doing this. Or I think you started planning before COVID was as, as bad as it's been. I mean, I think we were kind of in the infant stages. No, nobody really knew what was going to happen or how long this was going to going to going to affect us all. Mm -hmm. um, how what kind of changes did you guys have to make in, in your program model before you ran the first one? Well, originally, we were planning to have about 15 students in our class at any given time, no less than 15. And after COVID happened, we've had to make different protocols. Uh, and we decided that we shouldn't have any more than five people in a class at a time because we had to keep them socially distanced. And then we had to maintain our own um, cleaning protocols and sanitation. So your main change, though, it sounds like going from 15 people down to five. Yes. Joel, were you able to keep operational costs? Could you could could you do that just for the short term, or is it with that? You know, that's a great question, Mike, because it's about bandwidth and capacity to fill, sure. fulfill a uh, workplace or an employment pipeline. So, um, because we went from fifteen to five, then we had a small margin of error if someone we had attrition. Uh, because our goal originally, our objective was try to get to place 15. So we were right around there. We we graduated 19, placed 18. Mm -hmm. But it, it helped us keep our costs down. And the reason why we were able to do it as well is because we had the partners. We had people like Millinder White that came in and contributed the tools. Our first setup, our first shop setup was contributed by uh, by Millinder White and Larry Bureau Framing. And oh, okay. then we had homemade Los Angeles that came in and helped us incentivize the participants with a stipend, a student stipend scholarship for week two, where they actually got paid to, to do the training for week two. So week one was not a given. They had to get through Vincent and week one to get to week two, where they could get a stipend uh, for for that whole work. So really, it was a combination of, of different partners uh, pitching in to uh, so that not one partner uh, took the brunt of it. But we took the right. brunt of the responsibility for uh, facilities and logistics and instruction, which is really the key here. So right. it's, it's goal. We're yeah, not letting keeping the people coming in. Right, right. 
So, Vincent, can you talk to me a little about how your shop was set up? I mean, not necessarily a COVID-related. I, I respect you had the social distancing, and obviously you had all your cleaning procedures and such. But um, kind of walk us through a little bit how you were able to teach people who really, I'm guessing, didn't have a lot of skills to start with. And no. you were able to, to go through some some tool identification, tool usage, safety usage. Yeah. But, you know, kind of trying to paint the picture for me a little bit of okay. how your shop was laid one day I'm sitting in my office and I get in, um, Joel approaches me and lets me know that there's, he's having a meeting that day and he wanted me to sit down a meeting. And I met, uh, Ico. Well, I believe that was the second time that I've met Ico, but with reintroduction and they were letting me know of an idea that they had for, to break into the construction industry, which was uh, this homemade Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And when we're sitting down and talking about can, is this something that we could do? And it seemed like, you know, there was a lot of components going into it, but after listening, it's like, yeah, if we put our minds to this, it's something we could do. So I kind of got voluntold that day that I would be <laughs> the, um, the instructor for it. <clears throat> so, um, I mean, I did a little bit of construction back in the day, but I mean, that was a very long time ago. So I'm sitting down and they're telling me about teach construction and this online portal that we were going to use, you know, eventually down the line. So what I did, just knowing that I was going to end up being doing this is I enrolled into the, into your guys' course. Mm -hmm. I rolled into the course. I sat down with a pen and paper. I blocked off a few hours every day where I could just get online and take it real slow, do my own notes and just experience exactly what I was going to be telling somebody else to do. And so I got a time frame on what it took me to do it. Uh, relearned all the terminology, um, uh, figured out what kind of tools and power equipment we we're going to be using and then figured out because you know i am somebody who who helps other individuals how i could just guide somebody through this right so my mo my motto to myself was i'm not here as a specialist i'm here as a guide so how can i be the best guide possible and i know myself so it's just like how i'm with teaching everybody week one about communication I had to tailor my communication skills to be the best type of guy, to know that I can assist, I can help, but I'm not the ultimate authority uh, in this. I am the ultimate authority on week one, you know, but I'm not the ultimate authority on week two. That's, sure. That's sure. you, and Joe. Really, it's Joe. The man on the screen is the guy that you guys got to listen to. <laughs> yeah, the, the guy who's now famous and he never wanted to be. Like, I just wanted to make a few training yeah. videos. <laughs> so, um, well, what really made this a success? A success for us is our setup. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a computer lab where it's like a command central. There's a big computer with a humongous desk in the center of a room, and we have computer terminals set up all around the edges. And from our computer terminal, I have um, like the command center means that I can see everybody else's screens. I can help them through the process. So every morning at 9 a.m. when they came in for week two, um, I had uh, teach construction set up on all the computers. The guys sat down at the same terminals and they logged into each day, day by day, one through five. Yeah. And as they're going in there from nine to about 12 or nine to one, however long it took them to complete one day, um, I'm there to be asked any questions to. So, so let me interject then. That's a question we never know when we put these tools out there and we try to watch our own analytics and such, but you just never know. Is it engaging enough to keep people going. So from an honest perspective, how often did you have to encourage guys to keep watching? For us, most of these guys were pretty engaged. Um, and the reason is through our week one, we're employment centered. So we're not utilizing this just to teach somebody the basics of construction. We're teaching them this so they can get that past that job interview. So and I, I pulled you off on a tangent. My my apologies. So you would you would be in the computer lab for half a day and then go in the shop space. Is that how you were doing it? So from nine, I wanted them to get done with each individual day uh, for you guys' program mm -hmm. from nine to twelve. And in between that period of time, if they needed to get up and take a break, I let them know. Just let me know so they can keep staying engaged. Some guys would just want to sit there and power through it, but if they did that, I even told them you you know you got to take notes. Because even though that there's things for them to print out at the tail end, if they're not taking notes in the present, they're not really going to retain the information. Got so it. some guys were much slower because they had a harder time learning. But because of that, they're taking more notes 
and they're really retaining more information than the guys that are powering through it. Mm -hmm. The person who's there, the instructor, has to keep an eye on what everybody's doing. You got to be able to see where the shortcomings are, where people are getting stuck, because some days are pretty easy and some days are really hard. Like, for example, the miter saw. Uh, when it comes to that day on that test, I've seen a lot of people struggle and they might be sitting there trying to pass that test for an hour. But what they're really doing is psych them themselves out. You mentioned the quizzes. How how did, did your students do on them? I mean, did it did they land for them? Did they was it a good representation of what they were hearing from you or did? And I'm really asking this not as a puff piece to promote our products, but to say, did we do it right or did we screw up? <laughs> I believe you guys did it right. Um, and from us, from our first class to our last class, every single time the test scores improved and improved and improved. Nobody failed. Um, our first courses, I want to say there was like a B plus average. On our last class, every single person got 100% on every single quiz. But I think that had to do more with drive. So okay. these guys, if they're engaged, and if there's teacher assistance, and if we keep, if we establish that rapport, the test scores are just astronomical. Mm -hmm. because they, they know that they can retake it. They know that it's an open book format, but it comes down to how much do they want it. So it's, if we keep it really employer based, these guys are trying their very best. Because okay. I tell everybody on day one, it's, I tell them I expect 100% on every single test. I don't enforce it. But what I'm doing is I'm seeing, are these guys going back? Are they trying to figure out what they, they, they did wrong on? Are they taking the steps? Because they can't just ace everything, even though you can retake the test. Right. You have to retain the information. So our guys, they did very well on the test. You know, but I did have to keep reiterating, you know, to, to pay attention every now and then. Right. To try to zip through it. Did these formats like I was doing as you were chatting and I was hoping I was getting these things right. But did these uh, did that format work for you as far as a drag and drop being pictorial based? Oh, yeah. OK. And I really like this one, too, because they really have to zone in. The, the biggest challenge we always have is when people are saying you can't teach construction online. And, and we never said you could. But if you're going to have a lecture and a quiz that you could do online. So you can maximize your time in the shop space. That's always been our our design, program design, and program desire, and and hopefully we're hitting that. You guys had a, a unique model where you have a computer lab and you're able to see what students are doing, so you can really keep them engaged and keep them encouraged. A lot of our other partners would uh, do a lot of that as homework mm -hmm. online at home, maybe then show up and then do the hands-on portion. Mm -hmm. So I think you were able to get them probably more engaged or really support them when they were losing that engagement for whatever exactly. reason. And then I I was able to have an idea of where these people are at when I brought them into the shop class. So I knew who was already struggling. Right. I knew, you know, if people know what things are or, you know, what their speeds are. Right. So when I got into the shop class. I was able to do more one-on-one -on -one engagement at these guys' own level. Well, I do have one last question about the, uh, the system. Did you use some of the skills exercises that we had out there too? Oh, I used all of them. Okay. So did they did they work? I mean, that's okay. that's our biggest challenge. Oh yeah. This okay. right here we used as our final project. Okay. So at the end of day 5 when they finished the online component, I brought them to the shop class, shop class. It took these guys a few hours, but I had them do one of these themselves as their final project. Okay. And as they're doing that, I'm walking around and I'm looking at their technique. You know, some guys didn't want to put like this one right here. If the guys I graded better, they're making all these lines on all those on all right. those lines. Mm -hmm. They're identifying where the the drill. I mean, where the screw is going to go. Mm -hmm. Our, you know, some of them pre-drilled a hole. Some of them didn't. Okay. You know, so I'm trying to teach them like, okay, if you want to make things really easy, you got to go through all the small steps. Even though it might be more tedious right now, it's gonna it's gonna save you time in the long run. Right. So I want to learn about their planning. So from there, I'm trying to teach them how to read these blueprints more. I'm like, the guys who make the most money in a job site are the guys who know know how to read the blueprints correctly. Right. So what are you doing that's different than everybody else in here? I gotta say, you guys are amazing. Every time I talk to you, because when Joe and I sit down and make these exercises, mm -hmm. it's it's 
that's what we're looking for too. It's not about that this screw has to be put in the middle. You could put a screw wherever you want to, assuming you don't split the wood. Exactly. But it really was, we do these because that's how we used to train too. We'd walk around and say, all right, the plan's called out for this screw to be centered. So an only way to do that is to measure it. And exactly. the question always was, who took the extra mile and did it the way they were told to? Because really that's the essence of an employee. That's the good guy who's showing up at work and say, okay, I got a set of plans or my boss told me and I'm going to do what they told me to do. Later, when you're good at it, that's when you get to interject your own, well, wait a minute, I think I can do this better or faster. But at the beginning, you do what you're told. I look back on, on the last day. Because on day one, when we when I give them um, one of these build projects and I give them the blueprints, I'm sitting back and I'm just looking. I'm like, okay, who actually read this? You know, And I know because somebody will come up to me like, okay, so what am I supposed to do? I said, I don't know. What does it say in the, in the, in the paper? <laughs> To read it and we're like oh okay i'm like yeah all right but now when i do it that way the very next day they know what to do so I each day it. they're getting a little bit and a little bit sharper because they're learning how to do the process and then by day five i'm sitting down at the tail end i'm like okay guys who has all those blueprints I'm like you might want to save those because you should read through that to relearn how to do these because if you do when you get on the job you're gonna have a better idea and always right. read these kind of things. And they're like, oh yeah, you know, I, this this makes sense. Right. But yeah, exactly, exactly true. They got, and these blue, these build projects are the most fun that the students have in class. Mm -hmm. Now they get to learn these power tools. Now they get to learn to see how things work, and they can see the progression day by day of their quality of work. Right. And they have so much fun doing it. So and I have a class doing it too. Well, what were the challenges you had though? I mean, what, what didn't work out for you when you guys, not, not every program works perfect. Right. So right. what would you, what did you have to fix each time you ran? Cause you've run through what, two or three? We had four core four. Months okay. and over the course of two and a half months. And um, I think one of the challenges, if I can start is just really just uh, because we contracted from 15 to five and with five. And if you, and you can't have more than 10 in the building or seven or eight, you know, at any one time, we are really constricted in terms of vetting the, the recruities to get to week one. Right. Sure. And so it was a, it was always a random kind of chance that we would lose people. And we did, we had attrition uh, in, in week one, uh, not so much in week two, but week one. So that was a challenge to see, can we uh, attract and really hone in on the people that would be most successful who are most ready for a two week program? Yeah. Okay, it's not for everybody. It was for the people that had the attitude and had the commitment to say, I want to be in construction. And that's what the whole two week program is. And that's not a large margin of error. So that was our, for me, in terms of a, a program <clears throat> perspective, one of the greatest challenges. I'm sure Vincent has others as well. Yeah. Um, to me, getting the people into the class for day one was the most difficult because it was the longest part of the process. Right. So, yeah. For example, um, we had to create our marketing material. We had to put that out into the world and it works. I even got calls from people in Canada, which was strange and satisfying at the same time. It's like, you want to do this over here? I'm like, yeah, well, we found it on this, on, you know, on this platform or that platform. So it, it, that was working, but we would have to uh, do an online recruitment. And from that online recruitment, um, you know, pitch the program in a very short amount of time and make it sound attractive. So that was the most difficult part for us, or at least for me, because week one and week two, once I got the hang of it, was kind of fun. It is fun. Mm -hmm. It's to me, it's a whole accumulation of everything that we have out to offer at the WorkSource Center put into one phenomenal program because it leads to employment. <clears throat> So what about in the shop space? Did you make any changes as you went through your four sessions that made it more efficient or a more? Uh, for the space itself, we, we kept that pretty similar. But for me, it was how I had them do the shop class changed a little bit every single class. So we might have a superintendent from Millinder White come in to oversee one of the build projects. You know, he wasn't there teaching it, but he was there to be asked questions to. Well, that's cool. I like that idea. Yeah, as just a you know a professional in the field. 
Right, right. And it also gets your students to up their game a little bit because they have yes. a potential employer who's kind of there overseeing. Exactly. That's so, great. Um, and it seemed to work because we had the same guy there for the final project, which is the, the mini wall. And every single class he was saying it was getting better, better, and better, and better. To the last one, he just said these guys are pretty much golden. So right. it just, you know, it boosts my ego a little bit, but also know <laughs> that I'm on the same, I'm on the right path. Right, right. So what's 2021 have in, in, in store for you guys? You're going to continue this uh, program with Homemade Works? Do you know? Or? Yeah, we, we hope. I mean, we, we know we have proof of concept, Michael, with together with you and Homemade. And we have actually other uh, construction uh, companies and projects that are looking to our workforce center to do primarily local hire local highway people mm -hmm. with barrier right with so so that the the boon of the construction industry really inures to to a lot of diverse communities so we're looking to to attract those employees because for us it's not just the training it's the placement it's the employment that right. drives so uh, um uh, Ico says it a lot of time customer uh customer focused client centered you know what i mean mm -hmm. so that we're fulfilling the needs of the employer so that if we get the employer they may need more framing they may need more electrical whatever they need we're going to try to work with you michael hopefully to build out a couple of more modules so that we can get some carpenters or some entry-level carpenter workers mm -hmm. uh, during that, you know they can get on a job site on a, and, and be part of a car carpentry uh team or a yep. flight we're going to try to do that in 2021, uh, but we got to be safe. We got to do this all uh, because it's it's not it's not worth it uh, to get right. anybody sick. So we have to work within those parameters. But we're looking to expand in 2021 for sure. Outstanding. Vincent, well, we've yeah. we've got new courses that are online now. New ones coming out. Vincent, you're always, or both of you always welcome to look at our site too, and look at some of the new stuff. Just uh, over the holiday, we posted a new Windows course. Uh, everything. What's a window? How do I install a window? Proper flashing techniques, the whole nine yards. So uh, we're adding on plumbing uh, and we're doing a bunch of other things. So there's, there's new stuff that'll be available for you too. Well, Homemade Works couldn't have found a better partner out in LA. Um, and, and I know Homemade Works as a national organization is doing this in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. They're talking to other chapters about, about launching, but uh, you guys have been one hell of a partner to help them launch this program. And, and the data speaks for it. It's not just what you, your, your, your perspective and how you take it so seriously. It's about the results you've already experienced. So it's fantastic. 95%. You can't, you know, that's, that's pretty proven. It, 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 it's just obscene. It's obscene on how good it is. When I was running workforce training programs with adult adults, we were hitting 85% completion uh, and about an 80 to ranging between 80 to 90% placement rate after that. And I thought we were king of the castle. You guys just knocked me down a peg. So I'm, I'm my, proud my, to hear those. Yeah, no, it's because of you. So the uh, demographics really quick, 57% African-American, 33% Latino, 5% Asian, 5% Caucasian. 29% of our graduated clients were re-entry. 24% were at-risk homeless and 24% were veterans. Were veterans. That's outstanding. That's great. That's great. Well, gentlemen, I do appreciate you taking your time out of your busy day and, and wearing a tie for me there, Vincent. I know so. <laughs> but not only looking great, you're running great programs. And, and it was really an honor to work with you. And I hope we can do so again. So. Michael, thank you. And I teaching appreciate it. Each talk. You, guys are, you guys are really a core part of this program. We look forward to growing and working with you uh, and Joe, your talent on care of the talent in the right. future. So thank you, for, uh, thank you for allowing us to to be here to share. Vincent, yeah. thank you for your service and leadership. Thank as you well. guys. Yeah. The only reason we're able to do this is because of your guys' teaching portal. And how well, so it's we're like we're gonna we'll, we'll, I'll be I'll be watching to see when you guys log back in to get more students in there. So we, I have all of our systems set to ping me when people are creating accounts and such, just so I know everything's working. But really, it's just I love seeing new accounts get created because you know that's somebody else that might be working in our industry. Oh, so yeah. it's always really cool. Right. So, I, gentlemen, again, I really appreciate it. You've been great to work with. Thank you, Michael. We'll see all you. Right. Okay.